Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with How to Build a Record Library in 1953, courtesy of Howard Taubman, music critic of the New York Times. We're going through this systematically before it disintegrates completely. And we are already up to keyboard music, <clears throat> which is chapter six. Um, and as usual, there is an A list and a B list. And today we will be talking about the A list, the standard stuff, whereas the B list will be the more unusual. So anyway, there's some really interesting comments here, by the way, at the beginning. Um, did, if you would see how they felt about period instruments. In 1953, Talman writes, but it will be noted that in the accompanying list, harpsichord recordings of Bach and Scarlatti are recommended. Why? Well, Bach and Scarlatti wrote some of their most significant music for that instrument, and that music sounds better as originally conceived. The harpsichord, in the hands of a skillful player, is capable of subtle variety of, of effects, tone, color, and balance that cannot be achieved on the concert grand. So there you go, etc. But here's the cool part. One word of advice when playing these harpsichord discs on your phonograph. Keep the volume as low as possible. I love it. He's not entirely wrong, you know. Taking up the volume to an undue extent will give an entirely false idea of the instrument itself as well as of the music. Well, <clears throat> I've heard some pretty loud harpsichords in my day, and I'm sure you have too. But they're right in the sense that cranking up the volume will drive you insane. It will create a monochrome, hammering, stabbing pain in your head. Ugh. So they have a point. I do think you should play harpsichord, solo harpsichord recordings at a more judicious volume. Let's put it that way. And I leave you to determine what the judicious volume is. So with that, let's look at the A-list. The basic lists. Recordings are for solo piano unless otherwise indicated. So let's see. Oh, here we go. The English Suites with Valenti on Westminster on harpsichord. This is Bach, of course. The French Suites on harpsichord with Valenti on Westminster. The Partitas with Paul Bedora Skoda on Westminster on piano. And the Well-Tempered Clavier with, naturally, Wanda Landowska on harpsichord. That was not a harpsichord that you played quietly. She played the Plyle mega chord. It had the, the, the dynamic range of a concert grand and like, well, you know, it was rather sonorous. Let's put it that way. Then we have Beethoven. Okay. I'm not going to go through each sonata here because it's mostly sonatas. In fact, it's all sonatas. Well, before we get to Beethoven, notice what's missing in Bach. The Goldberg Variations, perhaps the most iconic piece of Bach keyboard music in existence today. But in 1953, not so much. All right, Beethoven, Sonatas with, I mean, these are famous people, Willem Kempf, Solomon, uh, Willem Backhaus, more Solomon, Vladimir Horowitz, Guillaume Arnovais, um, Schnabel, Arthur Schnabel, Kempf again, that's Beethoven. I mean, these are all recordings you could still get today. Many of them are still quite recommendable today. Some of them are legendary. So yeah, I mean, Beethoven is not a surprise. Brahms, Intermezzi with Gieseking. Oh, I have the Gieseking box right there. There they are. Piano pieces, Opus 116 and 118 with, with Carl Simon. Ooh, on Decca. Not too thrilling there. Uh, Handel variations with Eugene Istomin. <clears throat> and variations on a theme of Paganini on Mercury with Keen. K-E-E-K-E-E-N-E, -E -E -E, Keen. That's Brahms. So no sonatas. And, uh, well, let's see. Well, you know, I guess that's Brahms. Chopin. Here we go. Ballads. No recommendation. In 1953. Can, I can't believe there was no recommendation. Jed, if you're out there, what was the recommended recording of the Ballads in 1953? Maybe some of you know. I think that's shocking. Don't you think? Wow. The Etudes with Gold Sand on Concert Hall. The Etudes, Opus 25, that was Opus 10, with No Vice on Vox. Um, the Fantasy in F minor with, this is all No Vice and No Vice on Vox and Vox with the Mazurkas with No Vice on Vox. The Nocturnes with Arthur Rubinstein. What's not to love? Uh, the Polonaises with Rubinstein. These are all on Victor. 
Uh, and let's see the Preludes with No Vase again on Vox. The Scherzos with Rubenstein. Sonatas 2 and 3 with No Vase on Vox. We really ought to get all that stuff reissued and make sure it's still available. She was some pianist. And the Waltzes with, of course, Dinu Lipati, which are on EMI Warner now, and they were on Columbia in the U.S. anyway back then. So that really covers Chopin. There's a lot of Chopin there. Debussy, this is bizarre. Sweet Bergamask Children's Corner, Walter Gieseking. That's it. No more Debussy, no Preludes, no Estampe, no nothing. Only the Children's Quarter and the Sweet Burger Mosque for Debussy. That is odd, I think. I mean, I don't know about you. List, Anais de Pelerinage with Kempf. Well, not the most idiomatic list, I would say. They're not terrible, but Hungarian Rhapsodies, Farnadi on Westminster. Piano music, generally, doesn't say what. With Horowitz on Victor. The Sonata with Barrer on Remington. And variations on Weinenklagen with Cabos and, and Bartok. Weinenklagen, Cabos, Bartok. I have no idea what that is. Maybe one of you do. Bartok is a label? The Bartok label? That is odd. Mendelssohn, the Variation Sérieuse with Horowitz. Uh, Mozart, forehand piano music with Bedora Skoda and Jorg Demus on Westminster. The Sonata in A minor with Lipati. Um, and then other like sonatas and things for two pianos with Ferkuzny. And then the rest of it was, let's see, sonata in F played on Mozart piano, on Mozart piano with, with Bedora Skoda on Westminster. Um, so that's a strange selection of Mozart. Then we've got Rachmaninoff, the Preludes with Mora Limpany. Okay. And the suites numbers one and two for two and pia for two pianos with Vronsky and Babin. And that's it for Rachmaninoff. No etude tableau, no Corelli variations. No, no, okay. Scarlatti Sonatas on the harpsichord with Valenti on Westminster. Five separate discs. Schubert impromptus with Schnabel and other sonatas and things. Let's see, Sonata in A with Aitken on EMS. Sonata in C minor with Aitken on EMS. And the Sonata in B flat with Kempf. So Kempf is a you know, good guy. Schumann, oh, lots of Schumann. Okay, Carnival, played by Rachmaninoff. David Bundler Tenza, played by Esch Esbacher on Decca. The Fantasy of Stucke with Rubinstein. The Fantasy in C with Firkuzny. Firkuzny, Firkuzny stuff ought to be reissued in a box. Kinderzainen with Gisa King. Well, some of it was reissued in a box, actually. Uh, Papillon, Noves, Sonata in F sharp minor with Bedora Skoda on Westminster. And the Symphonic Etudes with Mora Limpany on HMV. And that's the A-list. That's all there is to it. I mean, it ends at S. I guess nothing comes after S. And uh, next we'll do the B-list. Kind of interesting, isn't it? So in 1953, there was no Goldberg Variations. There was no recommendation for the Chopin Ballades. I just, that sort of blows my mind. Anyway, feel free to weigh in on this list. Let me know what they left out, what they missed, what they ignored but we'll check the B-list next. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me. Take care.